Enzyme Immobilization and Testing Its Application. This practical is all about enzymes. It's all about those biological catalysts that are protein in nature and folded into that three-dimensional globular shape. In this practical, yeast was used and yeast cells contain the enzyme sucrase. Sucrose solution was also used. The sucrose acted as the substrate and the substrate was changed into glucose, which was our product. So what exactly does immobilization mean? The correct definition is that immobilized enzymes are enzymes that are fixed to each other or some other inert material. We immobilized our yeast cells by trapping them in a gel. And that gel was sodium alginate. The gel was prepared by mixing sodium alginate and distilled water in a beaker. The yeast was prepared by mixing it with distilled water in a separate beaker. The yeast solution was added to the sodium alginate, so it was added to the gel, and this mixture was mixed very well. Separately, a calcium chloride solution was prepared. The next step involved drawing up the yeast and sodium alginate mixture into a syringe. Very slowly, small amounts of the yeast and sodium alginate mixture were dropped from the syringe into the beaker of calcium chloride solution. As this gel and yeast mixture hit the calcium chloride solution, perfect beads were formed and the function of the calcium chloride solution is to harden the beads. When all the yeast and sodium alginate was dropped from the syringe into the calcium chloride solution, we let the beads sit for 10 minutes to harden. The beads were removed from the calcium chloride solution and washed with distilled water. Washing with distilled water removes any possible free yeast that might be on the outside of the beads. So that was how we immobilized our yeast cells in a gel. Here's a rough diagram of one of those beads. So you have the alginate gel, you have the pores and you have the yeast cells inside. Do we have to use a gel? No, there are other methods of immobilization. The first way of immobilizing would be physical methods, so just as we did, trapping in a gel, or another way would be to attach the enzymes to ceramic beads. Chemical methods of immobilization would be to bond the enzymes to physical supports or to bond them to each other. Now that we have immobilized our enzyme, we have to test its application. What's it like to use? The first thing we did was we transferred our beads to a separating funnel and we had a straw in the funnel to prevent the tap from getting clogged. Then we added our substrate, which is the sucrose solution. We immediately tested with a glucose test strip and then every two minutes afterwards the solution was tested. The process was continued until the glucose test strip changed colour to indicate the presence of glucose. So all good scientific experiments need something for comparison, so they need a control. Our control was free yeast in the separating funnel and then we added our sucrose solution. We tested straight away using a glucose test strip and then every two minutes until a positive result for glucose was obtained. The results. Let's discuss the immobilized yeast first. It took much longer for a positive result for glucose to appear, but the product was much clearer. Why did it take so long for a positive result? Well, the sucrose has to make its way in through the pores of the gel and then has to mix with the yeast cells and the product has to find its way out of the pores. That takes time. In contrast, the free yeast tested positive for glucose much faster, but the product was mixed with yeast. What is the benefit or what are the advantages of immobilization? The first is that immobilization stabilizes the enzyme. The second is that the enzymes can be reused. The third is that you get a purer product, a product that does not have to go through purification. Be sure you can give some examples of enzymes in use and consult your textbooks for relevant examples, but here are a few. Pectinase is an enzyme that's used in food processing. It's used to extract juices, particularly from apples and oranges, and it's also used to clarify, to remove the cloudiness from fruit juices. Glucose isomerase is used in industry to convert glucose to the sweeter tasting fructose. This avoids you having to add more sugar to your product. So that was the practical on enzyme immobilization. It ties in nicely with revising your enzymes, checking out bioprocessing, single cell proteins and bioreactors. Good luck.